This is the return of the Republic. And this is the War Room with Owen Schroyer and Roger Stone. This is the War Room, and we have stacks of news here. I've got stacks of news on deep state developments, lawsuit developments, Clinton email developments, and all of that. We've got job news, economy news. That's all good news. The NFL ratings are down. You've got perhaps the biggest data breach in the history of the NSA on our hands. I've got a stack of laughing at liberal news. But first, considering all of the confusion and all of the questions we have right now on the cyclone bomb and the weather hitting New England right now, I think we should go to the expert, Al Gore. What is going on? Scientists reported with unprecedented alarm that the North Polar ice cap is, in their words, falling off a cliff. One study estimated that it could be completely gone during summer in less than 22 years. Oh. Another new study to be presented by U.S. Navy researchers later this week warns it could happen in as little as seven years. It's the Man Bear Pig. Tonight, with much of the country in a deep freeze, the Great Lakes are battling a record-breaking bitter onslaught of snow. Tonight, more than 200 oh. million Americans dealing with an Arctic blast, winter weather alerts from the Rockies to New England, even My into goodness. the deep south. Well below zero for wind chills once again, and the pattern is such we might see some snow across the southeast. This is just wild. Al. In Lorraine, New York, firefighters tunneling their way into this what? home. Is that Al Gore's house? Trapped inside. I think Al Gore's in there. Don't stop. The co-founder of the Weather Channel now says man-made global warming is a myth. Made up to push a political message. This is an incredible bad, bad science. All right. All right. We need a mass of volunteers to Al Gore's house immediately. He has been snowed in. The doors are shut. The doors are shut. He's been snowed in. We're going to get you, Al. We're going to. What's this? Yeah. Al Gore is snowed in, folks. He's snowed in and he's blaming global warming. We're going to get you out of there, Al. He's starting to lose his mind. OK, we're going to get to the real news on the other side of this break. We've got a couple polls right now at the War Room Show on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter at War Room Show. Now, I want to cover the poll that we put out yesterday first. Go to the one from yesterday first, guys, because with all of the Bannon confusion and intrigue and everything that's going on, what I'm noticing, though, from at least our audience here is people aren't really kind of buying into the Bannon drama. And if this was an attempt to split Trump's base or fracture Trump's base, it's not working. Guys, let's make this full screen so that I can read it real quick. Because the reason I want to cover this is because, okay, so the the poll was what caused the Trump Bannon feud, and Bannon in it for himself. Bannon quotes were fabricated. Bannon and Trump are trolling, or Bannon political influence failing. And the the winner was Steve Bannon and Trump are trolling. That got six thousand votes. So most of the people in that poll aren't even buying it at all. They think that there's some other ripple to this to be known in the future. So that was yesterday's poll. Now today's poll, what is today's most exciting story? Steve Bannon drama, Department of Justice reopening the Clinton email investigation, Paul Manafort sues Robert Mueller over the Russian probe entrapment, or the Dow Jones crossing 25,000 for the first time ever hitting another record. And as of right now, just over a thousand votes, the Department of Justice reopening the Clinton investigation is the most exciting news story to our audience. So what that tells me, Whatever is behind all the ban and drama, whatever is the true story behind all that, and I'm sure we're going to talk about that here today, Trump's base is not affected by this. The liberty movement is not affected by this. The Make America Again, Great Again movement is not being affected by this. Yes, we're intrigued. Yes, we're trying to figure out what went down here. But the base is not fractured. And even though some feathers may have been ruffled here, it's not going to fracture Trump's base, and it's not going to stop our political movement from happening in 2018. This is The War Room. We'll be right back with Stacks of News on the other side. Here we are. It's already Thursday, January 4th, 2018. This is The War Room. I'm your host, Owen Schroyer, and we have stacks and stacks and stacks of news. 
it does appear justice is inching closer to Hillary Clinton. All kinds of different angles and aspects of that that we're going to cover today. Eventually, we're going to do a segment of laughing at liberals because I have a stack of news uh, that we can use for laughing at liberals here. And you've got extreme weather hitting the United States right now. In fact, we might as well just get that out of the way right now at the top. By the way, though, if you go to at War Room Show on Twitter, we have a poll out. I ask you to follow us on Twitter at War Room Show, and that's where you can vote on our daily polls. We'll be launching these polls right before we go on air and then concluding them. Well, when we finish, but also at the end of the poll, which will be the next day. What is today's most exciting news story? Steve Bannon drama, Department of Justice reopened Clinton email investigation. Paul Manafort sues Robert Mueller over the entrapment with the fake Russian probe. Or the Dow Jones hits a record crossing 25,000 for the first time. So those are the options for today. We ask that you vote. And that's how you can kind of have a say in where our coverage goes. But just to get this out of the way... We were trolling Al Gore in the first segment. I'm never going to stop trolling Al Gore because, well, he's a complete moron and somehow was the vice president of America. But you've got the cyclone bomb, they're calling it, this winter storm that's hitting the northeast right now. It's bringing record colds to many areas, record snowfall to many areas. National Weather Service is warning you could get up to 18 inches of snow in Boston. In other, well, sort of weather-related events, I guess just events like an earthquake, a volcano, Mount St. Helens, an active volcano, had four times as many earthquakes than usual last month. So is that a sign of things to come at Mount St. Helens? And then you also had a 4.4 earthquake hit the Hayward Fault Line in San Francisco yesterday. So we'll continue to maintain that. And that just gets that out of the way. But it's we had a caller call in yesterday asking. It's it's kind of strange. I mean, is all of this snow a real story? Is it really that big of a thing? Or has this become a story because the global warming narrative is such a failure? Is it is it such a is it is it crazy to us that there's about to be 18 inches of snow and a cyclone bomb? winter storm about to hit the New England coast? Is that crazy to us because we were told global warming is real, because we were told the planet keeps heating up, because we were told we would never see anything like this again, because we were told the polar ice caps would melt? Or is this just weather? Is this just weather? This is normal. That part of America was always getting big snow. I mean, look at history. I mean, maybe certain patriots traveled across certain bodies of water that were iced over. I don't know. Maybe it happened sometime. So maybe that's normal. So maybe it's not really a story. But the real story is that global warming is a total hoax. That's the real story. That's why they twist the narrative and now say climate change, which is what we were saying when they were saying global warming. So uh, Al Gore is currently snowed in to his multi-million dollar den, and he's blaming Man Bear Pig, so people are on their way to rescue him. Okay, now let's hit this positive news, because Trump, the Russian agent, is going to crash the economy, they said. It's not working. The Dow Jones Industrials cross 25,000 for the first time. So first you have All of these records set in the stock market. Okay, those have been noted. We just hit another record. It crosses 25,000. In the calendar year of 2017, you hit more records for the stock market than any other prior calendar year. So a record of records. Now, the rate of growth in the stock market right there is also a record. There have never been this. It's basically there's never been a short time span ever before where the Dow or these other industrials have have gone up at such a high rate. So you have a record number of records. You have the rate that the stock market is going up at a record. And then you just have record closing numbers seemingly almost every time it closes. So. And it was Hillary Clinton herself that said. 
We cannot have Trump in charge of the economy. He would surely destroy it. All the fake news echoed that Democrat talking point. But should we really be that shocked that this is what's happening when President Trump gets one year in office? Should we really be shocked that Barack Obama, a community organizer, a nothing, a nitwit, a fraud, a fop, President Hussein Hezbollah, should we really be that surprised that President Hussein Hezbollah didn't get one quarter of 3% GDP growth, a community organizer, a fake liberal from Chicago? Should we really be surprised that he could never do anything good for the economy? And then when a businessman, a successful businessman, a self-made billionaire, should we really be that surprised when he gets in office? and actually gets the economy going again? Should we really be that surprised that a failure, President Hezbollah, failed the economy and that a success, a winner, President Trump, gets the economy going again? Should we really be that surprised? Well, I guess he knows what he's doing. Barack Obama thought it was a magic wand. Trump realized, no, it's about legislation, cutting these regulations, cutting all this red tape cutting all the acts against our energy sector. That's what it is. Cutting taxes. Trump gets it. U.S. private sector adds 250,000 jobs in December versus the 190,000 estimated. I think there's only been like two months, and I'm going off the top of my head here, I think there's only been two months where the private sector jobs added did not reach the estimate. And one of those times, I think it was either November or October, it was because they set the estimate so high because jobs kept getting created at such a high rate, they set it too high, they, they couldn't possibly reach it. It was still huge jobs growth. So another month, another month of positive jobs growth and another month of the fake news being completely wrong about Trump crashing the economy. Job cut announcements in 2017 see lowest levels since 1990, coming from a latest report. Yeah, I mean, I could go on and on with these all day. Think about all the records. You've got unemployment down. And, and we can sit here and do the tactic, and, and we only do this because this is what the racist liberals do, where you say black unemployment is reaching record lows. Hispanic unemployment is reaching record lows. So that's just kind of how we fight back against them trying to race bait and play identity politics all day long because they fail at that too. But it's about all of America benefiting. It's about all of America getting a new job. It's about all of America getting a raise. It's about all of America getting a tax cut. Food stamps under Obama reached record highs. Now they're going at a different tra trajectory, and we have some areas where we're seeing welfare reaching record lows now. So, yes, that's what we need. We can't have a population dependent on the government. This is supposed to be an independent nation. People came here to be independent from any authority, independent from some government telling them how to run their lives. That's the point of America. Get it? I think people are starting to get it now. And what's going to happen when they start seeing their paychecks with a little more money in them because they're not getting taxed as much? People are going to start to look at Trump a little bit differently. And they might still hold on to some of that hatred that they've been harboring. But when they get to the poll and they think, man, I really liked making more money this year. Trump is going to win in a landslide in 2020, folks. It's not even going to be close. Well, you take a knee and then you take a nosedive in the ratings. NFL TV viewership takes heavy hit again in 2018. And this is a larger hit than they've taken in any of the previous years where they were taking marginal hits. Now they take a very large hit to their ratings. And that's the bread and butter. That's why teams were moving to Los Angeles. It's all about TV ratings. If the TV ratings are going down, that's going to be a major issue. That's what you get for taking a knee during the national anthem.
not a good public image. Oh, but if you wear cleats that mimic Christmas Santa Claus hats, then you get fined. Okay, that's where the NFL stands on that. How about this headline here? Chinese President Xi Jinping orders army to prepare for war in chilling footage. Huh. Now, I've always said this. North Korea is not the real threat. China is. North Korea is basically a junkyard dog for China. And Trump, I believe, is aware of this. And that's why he calls China out for sending oil into North Korea. But now the U.S. military is doing jungle training. Obviously, you've seen what's been reported about what's going on in North Korea. Where they launch, I I shouldn't be laughing, it's just, I mean, it's kind of indicative of the state they're in, where they launch a missile and hit themselves. I mean, think about that. Uh, Nobody wants World War III. At least nobody here. No, I don't think any general population wants World War III. But you know somebody does. And Xi Jinping is now ordering his army to prepare for war. All right, we're going to be joined by John Rappaport coming up in the next segment. Tyler Nixon will also be joining us in the third hour. I've got a stack of news here, but this this is the, we're going to knock this out in a full self-contained segment. So we'll probably do that. This stack of news is so important that I need to focus really hard and make sure that I'm in 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 the full zone when I get to the stack of news because the developments right now that are inching closer and closer to Hillary Clinton are huge. The developments right now exposing the fake Russian investigation and Robert Mueller's team is getting closer and closer. And there's just multiple angles here. And then you ask, what is Jeff Sessions doing? Well, he's trying to put out a joint still. He's trying to figure out what to do about marijuana, a minor, minor issue, at least in my opinion. But let's uh, let's play a clip here. Because this is what we were to- we told you was going to be coming. Guys, let's prepare clip six here. So, slowly but surely, they are trying to create this narrative that Trump is unfit for office. You've been seeing it everywhere, whether it be a tweet, whether it be a statement he makes, you know, whether it be him photobombing his son, Barron Trump, over Christmas, whatever it is, they think he's nuts because that's them actually projecting their mental shortcomings onto President Trump. But regardless, you're you're starting to see this more and more. And so now they're even bringing this up to Sarah Huckabee Sanders during the press briefings. Here is an NBC reporter asking the press secretary Sanders if President Trump is mentally ill. Questions. I'll try to make these simple first. Do the president? You don't think I can handle the hard ones? <laughs> Did the president's son, Donald Trump Jr., commit treason? Uh, I think that is a ridiculous accusation and one that I'm pretty sure we've addressed many times from here before. Finally, John Decker. If I can ask you after the tweet about the, about nuclear. You know, uh, just pause it real quick. Pause it here because this this whole thing. It's like we miss we miss like the most blatant double standard because it's so big it's like you don't even point it out but how is it that we're sitting here and we've got people talking about don jr donald trump jr committing treason let me just point out a couple basic facts about this one donald trump has never served public office donald trump jr donald trump jr was never elected to any office he's never ran for any office he's never ran any you know, political campaign to try to get elected. He's never been in any public public sector, state-run job. So how is it we're all, well, not, but all these people are saying, treason, treason, Trump Jr., treason. Look at what the people that actually worked in our government were doing. I mean, it's like, it's so crazy, you just ignore it. It's so crazy, it's like, oh, Don, Don Jr., treason. And you're just like, right, okay. 
You do realize what Barack Obama was doing with Operation Fast and Furious, covering up for Hezbollah, sending cash over to Iran. Nothing treasonous there, though. What about Hillary Clinton? You know, he came, he saw, he died. Uranium One deal. List goes on and on. No treason there, though. But Don Jr. has a meeting with a lawyer while he's not even serving any public office. That's treason, though. It just, these racist liberals really show their true colors as complete partisan hacks when they ignore these double standards. All right, so now let's go back to this reporter about to ask uh, Sarah Sanders if Trump is mentally ill. Be concerned about the president's mental fitness that he appears to be speaking so lightly about threats regarding the nuclear button. I think the president uh, and the people of this country should be concerned about the mental fitness of the leader of North Korea. He's made repeated threats. Mm. Oh, uh, he's didn't tested think about that missiles uh, time and time again for years. And this is a president who's not going to cower they hit, down. They, they, North Korea hit so themselves. Trump. North Korea hit themselves with the missile. Hold on. Stop the tape. Stop the tape. North Korea hit themselves with the missile. Do you understand that? North Korea hit themselves with a missile. Donald Trump is not the one that's mentally ill in this exchange. All right, let's finish this clip. And now his former ally, Steve Bannon. By attacking critics and key institutions in our democracy, isn't the president engaging in authoritarian behavior? Not at all. The president is simply responding uh, often to news of the day. I think if uh, the president can't as respond aggressively to an individual like the leader of North Korea that continues to threaten Americans, uh, then that's a dangerous place that we don't want to go down. Authoritarian behavior. So Trump gets into a Twitter spat with Kim Jong-un, and then you compare those two, and American liberal media is reporting that Trump is the one that's mentally unstable and that Trump is the authoritarian. Can you even write that? You could, you could write that into a script and pitch that as a movie idea, and people would think you're nuts. Because it makes so little sense. But that's what you get from liberal media in America between Trump and Kim Jong-un. Trump's the one mentally ill and Trump's the authoritarian when being compared to Kim Jong-un. All right, John Rappaport is going to join us on the other side. He's got news on some vaccines that he wants to report on. So you're not going to want to go anywhere. John Rappaport, no more fake news on The War Room right after this break. And I am now joined by John Rappaport from nomorefakenews.com. In fact, we're going to be discussing some of, some of the topics he's been covering there. First, John, I want to get into your story uh, from just before New Year's. Contaminated chemo drugs, the FDA, and chemical warfare against the public. Now, I've always felt that chemotherapy was not the answer for curing cancer. In fact, Many studies show that it makes it worse. But in this story, you highlight a, a complete another layer of this where not only could it be that these chemo drugs aren't working, but after the FDA already realizes they're toxic, they're still sending chemo drugs into the market that the FB, FDA already knew is toxic. Exactly. Uh, the company's called Fres Fresenius. It's a big Big pharma company, healthcare in Europe. They have manufacturing facilities around the world and they manufacture components of chemo drugs. So this is twice now that the FDA has discovered that the company has been lying and defrauding and endangering the public because the company does tests on their assembly lines to see that the the drugs, a.k.a. chemo poisons, uh, are pure, pure poison, right? Uh, yeah, we got to at least give you the clean line. poison. You know, we don't <laughs> exactly. want the poison to be toxic. Yeah, exactly. And so they have stopped these tests uh, over 400 times because obviously they were afraid that the results of the tests uh, would show that the chemo drugs have been contaminated with other poisonous elements 
not on purpose. So the FDA went after this company a few years ago and said, you can't do this, boys. And then they went away and the company kept doing this. And now the FDA has gone back to them again with a more, quote, severe warning letter. But none of this has stopped Fresenius from shipping their chemo components to other manufacturers who make chemo drugs. And these chemo drugs, which could very well be contaminated, are still coming into the U.S., still coming into other countries, and nothing is being done to stop it. So this is an incredible scandal that's being reported, you know, sort of lightly here and there by the press, and certainly is not targeting the FDA as it should, because the FDA is committing a major, major crime against the public by not shutting down this company and by not shutting down their ability to export these chemo drug components into the United States. The FDA is essentially saying, well, we don't like what you're doing. Uh, we're, we're, we warn you that if you keep doing this again, uh, we're going to stop allowing you to export the drugs. But in the meantime, while you fix the situation and we recommend you get an outside consultant to help you, you can still ship the poison chemo drugs with the added contaminated poisons wherever you want to. And this isn't the first time that the FDA has been found to do something like this. You've had actually many stories where a drug will be found contaminated and it still gets put out for sale. It still makes the shelves and nothing is done about it. You know, I don't see how there's not an open investigation into the FDA and the influence peddled over the FDA by the likes of Monsanto, as you mentioned, this Fren Frencinius company, and any other big pharma company that wages their financial power over the FDA. I mean, this is unacceptable. This, uh, the American people should be up in arms about this. Absolutely. In the same article that you just highlighted that I wrote, I gave some quotes from an interview that a reporter named uh, Martha Rosenberg did with an employee of the FDA several years ago, his name was Ronald Kavanaugh, okay? And his job was actually to review new drug applications that pharmaceutical companies make uh, to the FDA. And he said basically that when he decided that he wanted to be honest about his evaluations of these drugs and say no to dangerous drugs or drugs that were ineffective, he was threatened and his family was threatened. He thought that he could be possibly sent to prison or worse if he kept standing up to his bosses at the FDA. So what we're looking at there is a complete mafia operation, a rogue FDA agency that's been out of control for decades and decades and decades. In fact, when I ran for a seat in the U.S. Congress in 1994, one of the major uh, items on my platform was the FDA is a rogue criminal agency. The whole thing needs to be disbanded and start all over again. Get and rid that was of all 94. Imagine 94. what it's ballooned into now. Exactly. It's uh, if it was out of control, then it's completely out of control now. And we're talking about uh the phrase the press likes to use is holdovers from one administration to another. But this doesn't tell the story. These bureaucrats at the FDA who have uh, private deals and are colluding with pharmaceutical companies, they are permanent. They stay there. They don't go anywhere from administration to administration. It's their career forever. And so it's a mafia operation. It really always has been. And uh, you're absolutely right. I mean, people should be out in the streets. This whole operation needs to be completely curtailed, disbanded, thrown out. Criminal prosecutions have to result. People go to prison for very long terms. And then maybe you can start over with something that's really sensible. Well, well I, heard, I heard a tape of 
Donald Trump that was secretly recorded talking about, you know, touching women. I don't have time to protest the mass poisoning of a, an entire society. I don't have time for that protest. That's no good. But, you know, it's amazing to me as as we sadly joke about this. You have Jeff Sessions, who is obsessing right now, trying to, I guess, stop marijuana from getting legalized or, or decriminalized or whatever it is. That seems to be his obsession. I mean, it seems like all the time that's all he's talking about or doing. Look at the numbers. How many people die a year from marijuana? A handful, maybe. And it's probably from, you know, poisoned marijuana, which gets into the hands of an end user because it is illegal and on the black market. Versus how many people die a year from big pharmaceutical drugs. I forgot when we crossed the threshold, John, you probably remember this, but just a few years ago, the CDC's own numbers released, they crossed a threshold, more people dying from opiates and serotonin reuptake inhibitors than heroin, cocaine, and uh, some other hardliner drug, I think maybe meth, meth or something. All three of them combined more people are dying from big pharmaceutical pills. Yeah, the study that I always cite is July 26, 2000, Journal of the American Medical Association. And that's a conservative estimate, a conservative estimate by Dr. Barbara Starfield, Johns Hopkins School of Public Health. I've interviewed her. 106,000 people a year in the United States die from FDA approved pharmaceuticals properly prescribed, that would be a million people per decade, a million per decade. And I asked Dr. Starfield, has the federal government ever approached you to help them deal with this? No. Uh, has the federal government ever mounted a program to remedy this ongoing tragedy? No was her answer. This goes on and on and on. And every government official who is aware of this, and many are, believe me, are complicit in the crime, the ongoing crime. about. And I think that's because Big Pharma has become part of the embedded deep state. This is one of the vaccines that the establishment trying, tries to push on us every season. They do advertisement, advertising campaigns all over the major sports leagues, all over schools. It's everywhere. Get your flu shot. But the strange thing about it is that they admit that it's not effective. They admit that by the time they get the vaccine out there, the flu virus has already changed and evolved into something that they aren't prepared for. Yet they still push it knowing it's ineffective. And so here we are, John, another year goes by, another season where they talk about the flu virus, they talk about the flu vaccine, they push the flu vaccine, and then everyone that gets the flu vaccine ends up getting the flu. Well, when will the flu vaccine myth be finished? I mean, this is truly a myth. Yeah. One of the big parts of the myth was exposed in the British Medical Journal a few years ago. In fact, I'm just about to post a piece on this now because we're being told, oh, the flu is spreading to 37 states, et cetera, et cetera, in America. Every year, hundreds of thousands of blood samples or rather respiratory samples from so-called flu patients are sent to labs for analysis. And the overwhelming percentage come back with no sign of flu whatsoever. This is boggling to people, but it was exposed by Peter Doshi in the British Medical Journal online. And what it means is, is that your typical flu symptoms like fatigue and fever, chills, etc., cough, this can, these symptoms can be caused by a whole variety of different things. And doctors generally say, well, this is the flu, this is the flu, this is the flu. The CDC adds up all kinds of numbers and claims that they know that there are so many cases of the flu. But this is a complete lie because, again, 
overwhelmingly when you send samples to labs, they come back with no sign of any flu virus whatsoever. And yet these people are all being diagnosed with the flu. So if you think that the flu vaccine can actually work, even if you believe, you know, in the vaccine and you believe in vaccine theory, uh, it can't possibly work in the overwhelming number of cases because the people don't have the flu to begin with. So unless pigs can fly, this is not going to work. But yet, as you say, every year there's this massive push and there are people who say, well, I don't want to get the flu vaccine. Okay, well, you can't work here then. It's completely insane. And again, people should just simply rise up and say, you don't know what you're talking about. You're an idiot. You believe the talking heads on mainstream news. This is not the actual flu situation situation the vaccine could not possibly work but what is this weird stockholm syndrome where i feel like in the past they kind of used a fear technique to get you to get the flu vaccine you know you highlighted in your the great virus hoax in modern medicine story how they've used this before fear campaigns like they did with the swine flu in 2009, they did with the SARS outbreak in 2003. So it used to be like a fear campaign that they would try to run to sell these things. But now they've they've retreated. And I guess because they've already embedded the fear into the culture. Now there's this weird angle that they come out before the vaccine and they tell you it's not effective. We have the studies. It's not effective. In fact, the flu vaccine basically that we made was for last year's flu. So this year's flu, it, it's completely ineffective. So it's like they've now they've admitted it's like, yeah, it doesn't work. We're basically giving you a poison. But we've already instilled this fear from these fear campaigns in the past. So just go ahead and get your flu vaccine anyway. Yeah, it's completely insane. So they're banking on the fact that people now are so dumb that they can't see a contradiction when it's shoved right in front of their faces. Yeah, it's ineffective, it doesn't work, but you have to take it, it's very important. And they're testing that theory out, you know. Can we and it's working. Yeah, can we, yeah, it's working <laughs> for a lot of people. Can we bamboozle yes. the, the people once again by admitting that there's nothing to this story and then just shoving it down their throats anyway? But I have to tell you that people are waking up all over the world at the same time to the dangers of vaccines and the fact that natural health and building up your immune system is really the way to health. And no matter what governments do to try to cut off people's access to natural health and all that that means, they have been failing guard and you can see even uh, analyzing the economic figures in terms of what people spend on natural health that this is growing by leaps and bounds because people just don't believe what they're being told anymore by governments and public health agencies. Well, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure this out where we go from here. I haven't seen this story yet, John. Maybe you can enlighten me on this. Has anyone released a study or a survey of the actual numbers of flu vaccine sales? Are they going up? Are they going down? Are they remaining neutral? We know that most of the people that make and manufacture these vaccines already have a deal and a contract where they're going to make X number of vaccines anyway and get paid. That's how Big Pharma works. That's how they get their money. But what about the actual sales? What about the people pushing them? What about the actual consumer? Are numbers up? Are they down? Have you seen any reports indicating that? I've seen no studies because you're putting your finger on something very important here. No studies that are detailing the number of people basically who are taking the vaccine because that's what you want to know. Is that number going up or is it going down? And because I see no significant stories about that, I have to assume that it's not going up, that it's probably going down and they would not like people to understand that. Because that would indicate, okay, loss of faith. I mean, you have to under, people have to understand the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, they hold conferences 
where they discuss how are we going to push these vaccines? What are we going to do? These are marketing and PR conferences. And they, they you know, talk about, okay, we have to instill fear. We have to exaggerate the fear. This is on the record. I mean, I'm not just making this up. We have to exaggerate the fear. We have to talk about death, potential death. And let's keep in mind, let's keep in mind when you talk about big pharmaceutical companies, they send a lot of advertising dollars through these mainstream television networks. So you've got another situation where they know, hey, we're funding you and we need you to kick, a, kick us back a little fear campaign. Talk about, give a little fear mongering on the air. That'll give us a little kickback. You bet. Uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. made a, a tremendous quote from, he had a discussion with Roger Ailes, who was the head of Fox News at the time. And Kennedy said, why is it that I can't get on the air to discuss my book, which is about toxic mercury and vaccines? I mean, I can't even talk about it. I can't mention it. Nobody will have me on. And Ailes said, listen, 70% of our advertising comes as far as the news goes, from pharmaceuticals. And if anybody on my news channel had a person like you on, and these these were friends, these two guys were friends, I would fire them the next day because that's where our money comes from. So the pharmaceutical companies basically control mainstream news. And if you don't think so, just watch a little television and see how many drug ads are now spread out across the spectrum. They're everywhere. And all you got to do is listen to the silence about these breaking stories about how they admit the flu vaccine is unsafe. You know, old vaccines like Gardasil and the danger of that. Look at how they never cover that. That's totally based on the synergy they have with Big Pharma. John Rapport, thank you so much for joining us. You can find all his work at nomorefakenews.com. There goes John Rapport. Now, for us, you know that we are now live 10 hours a day, real news with David Knight, the Alex Jones Show. He's on almost four hours every day now. And then the War Room from 3 to 6 with myself and Roger Stone. It's all possible because of your support at InfoWarsStore.com. So I urge you, get to InfoWarsStore.com before the New Year's extended sales are up. That includes half off. That's 50% off some of our top sellers like Super Male Vitality, Brain Force Plus, Survival Shield X2, Vitamin Mineral Fusion, how about Super Blue Toothpaste? That is one of the most popular products. That's half off right now. Vitamin B12 Secret 12, 50% off. And free shipping store-wide. Free shipping and 50% off all InfoWars Life Select storable food products. You're hearing the stories about earthquakes and volcanoes. Might be a good time with free shipping and 50% off InfoWars Life Select storable food to go to InfoWarsStore.com and take advantage of that special. We will be right back with more of The War Room. I'm in good shape, ma, but you know that I'm growling Like a cup in a cage I can't cope with this hopelessness Though I try to be open and go with it But I'm soaking in the pain like a rain never stops flowing in As I'm floating in A glowing river through a golden gate Trying to motivate Yeah, I do my fucking best But there's two words in my head I just can't I just fucking can't I you can't see me Cause I've been living inside of you but I guess it's time I set me free And there's nothing that you can do
There's nothing that you can do Nothing like this. You'll be fine, trust me, just in time we get along. No, leave me alone. Why, yes, can you see that you are alone, big? We're now sitting in our own throne, big. We need nobody, can you see it through? But it's not you who I should be listening to. Guess what, big? Nobody fucking needed you. No, but nobody fucking needed me. Yeah, they never needed us. They were the new Jesus up. There's no fucking heaven that they don't believe in us. But they my friend. I'm the only one that you can trust, yeah. God damn it, you were an idiot. Go online, be a slave for the media Thank you for God, what your father said Are you serious? Look at yourself, big I You fucking hideous <laughs> Yes, I've been living inside of you But again, this time I set me free Yes, I've been living inside of you But again, this time I set me free Oh, I love this time I set me free Oh, I love this time I set me free Oh, I love this time I set me free Oh, I love this time I set me free But again, this time I set me free. And there's nothing that you can do.